All right, so this is this is where we left off. We had a uh, a Photoshop file that we imported, and we learned to uh, uh, do some basic movement of uh, moving the, the pin of rotation to this particular arm here. All right, and um, so which is fine. I mean, it, and we we worked with the motion blur and enabled motion blur. Right? We also paired the sight to the arm so it's stuck to it. Notice the sight, I can move it and it will feel like you know, it's in midair, right? Um, but it's moving with the motion of the arm. So, but the, the, one of the difficult things with this is if we could look at this arm motion, it's very, uh, Stilted. There's no bend in the elbow. There's no bend in the wrist. And so we're going to want to use the uh, Puppet Warp uh, tool within After Effects so that we can bend at the elbow and bend at the wrist. But then we're going to want to animate those uh, points. All right. And there's a couple different ways to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a new uh, start over. All right. So I'm going to close this project. Say that, and then we're going to re-import the Photoshop file. And we have our same, we have a lot of different versions. This We're not going to show these, so I'm going to delete a whole bunch of layers that we don't need. And instead of using the scythe and arm alone, we're going to keep the arm and, and scythe together. We're going to get rid of this blood splatter. All right, so we have this one object right here. And um, you can add, uh, and I'm going to save this so I can undo this. So this is a children of the corn poster with puppet pins. All right. Um, there's a this little pin tool becomes the Puppet Warp pin. And when you click on it, it generates, uh, and you, you pick a point. So for a moment, for the moment, I'm going to, so I can see where the shoulder is because it, it falls into black. I'm going to um, turn off the, the title and the, um, the background. So I can say, okay, this is about where the shoulder would be. And you can see it generates this huge mess, mesh and then I can put where the elbow is and where the wrist is, all right? And these are movable. Now I, you can see I can move these just like I would in Photoshop. And um, these actually are, when I do the twirl of the triangle within that layer, so the effect, it generates this puppet warp palette and uh, the effect of that puppet warp palette. Now there's these mesh. And you can see the number of pins. And each one, when you select one, you can uh, you see each one's highlighted. So a circle around a yellow circle means it's not highlighted the outline, whereas the uh, filled in yellow circle means it's the one that's active. So it's actually really easy to rename these, and it's smart in the context of something like this, so you know where they are. And so I'm gonna uh, just hit the return key, and I'm gonna name this one shoulder. Um, I'm gonna name this one elbow. And I'm going to name this one uh, wrist. All right. And so right now uh, these pins, and I can now I can turn the the background back on, and I can turn the uh, title back on if I want to. Which actually, why don't we not do that? And so I can I can just define uh, uh, points now. So if I if I default all these uh, triangles. All right, there's a keyframe. Each pin is considered a keyframe. It assumes that you're going to want to make changes. So I don't have to uh, keyframe them initially. It's, it's automatically assumed they're going to be keyframed. All right, so you can see the, the blue dots when I hover over the starting position. And so if I move forward, and let's say I was going to back up the arm, I could back the arm up. All right. And you can see I have to move them independently. So they don't, they're not paired. And so this is, it's okay for the sake of uh, this pretty simple animation. And so now I can watch the animation, right? 
And so not unlike the previous version, it rotates back, but now it's, it's, it's not happening all in the shoulder, right? It's happening across um, the elbow and the shoulder, and that's, that's kind of nice. And then we want to do this quick chop, okay? And I could move this down. Now notice is that I, I have to kind of move them independently. And so they don't, they're, they're not moving together in the way that you would want a puppet to work. So you kind of have to keep moving them down one at a time. And we're going to look at this at another way of how to, to make them move together so that you wouldn't have to move each one independently. But for the sake of this really simple puppet, it's fine. It works. So we move down, and now we can back up. Watch. All right, and so that didn't look kind of natural, and that's because you can see the arms kind of, you see how it gets squished, right? So the, the position of the, of the elbow isn't natural. So even this isn't perfect. So how, how am I gonna fix this? Well, there's a, there's a tutorial uh, that I discovered that's really wonderful um, by this guy, Robin Fuller, where he talks about how to rig a puppet um, using a combination of pairing what are called null objects to these uh, pin puppet pin points, uh, which we're going to do. So what I need to do in using what's called an expression, an After Effects expression. So what I need to do is I'm going to actually delete all these pins. I'm just highlighting all these movements. I'm going to highlight them and delete them. So we're back to our initial set of pins. And what I'm going to do, and I'm kind of doing this backward. He suggests you make the, uh, the null object points first which is useful since you, you need to be able to see the, the, the pins. So why don't we do that? Let's start completely over. We're gonna just delete all these pins and we're gonna turn off the corner and the kids again and I'm gonna create in the layer, I'm gonna say new null object, all right? And this, null o this thing called a null object is just a little square and the whole point is it's something that you can tie other things to. And so in this case, oops, I'm gonna make this my pivot point. And notice the left-hand corner is, the upper left-hand corner is the pivot point. So if I rotate, the rotation point's not the center. It's, whoops, it's at the, it's at the, um, the upper left-hand corner, all right? And I'm gonna rename these. I'm gonna name this one shoulder. And I'm gonna just copy and paste this. Oops, copy, paste. I'm going to name this one elbow, and I'm going to move it upward. Copy and paste again, wrist. All right, and I'm going to put that right at the wrist point. Okay, and so now I have these three uh, Null points, and I'm gonna I'm gonna parent them as you might expect. The wrist moves with the elbow, and the elbow moves with the with the shoulder. So we would say wrist to elbow, elbow to shoulder. All right. So if I, even though it's not going to move the picture yet, the image behind it, um, if I were to move now the null object. It moves the others with it, right? So you get an idea of how the parenting works, and same with rotation. So if I rotate the null object, you can see the other ones are going with it, all right? Okay, but there's the what we need to do now is we make a, our mesh, and we make sure that the uh, object that you want to mesh is highlighted. So don't you don't want the null objects highlighted. Make sure the layer that you want to actually uh, do the, the puppet pins to are is selected, not the actual null object. So I select my my arm here, and I put pinpoints right at the corners where the null objects are. All right, it's tough to see this one. Whoops. Just about see that one. It is two, three. 
All right, and so now I have these mesh again, and I have these pins, and I can highlight each one, and I can rename them again. We'll just say shoulder. Elbow, wrist, and um, so here's the the interesting part. So effectively, by default, the the mesh follows uh, one uh, pathway to 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 anchor the that point. All right, to the mesh itself. But we can instead tell the the mesh point to follow. Um, the null object, and that's what this, you can see he leaves, uh, uh, Robin leaves it in his tutorial, the code, but I also put it here, and I'm going to put it in the, in my notes as well. So I'm going to copy this, what's called an expression, all right, and, whoops, in the shoulder, when I twirl down, we'll see the uh, stopwatch, and I hold down the option key because I'm on a Mac. On a Windows, it's Alt. I hold down the option key and I click, and it brings up the expression. And I literally paste that code in there, and you can't see it, but I'm going to arrow up, and it's waiting for me to name the null object. See, it says null layer name. All right, and I'm going to replace null layer name with the layer name. And this is why it's good to keep things named the same as one another, so you can recognize. So that one's shoulder. And I do the same to this one, option, paste the code, arrow up, replace this one with elbow. And make sure you don't hit enter, because that'll put the, the code on the next line, and that'll mess it up. But you can always just repaste it, just select all and repaste the code. Actually, I'll make a mistake on this one on purpose. So option, paste the code in, wrist, and so say by, uh, you know, you're used to confirming this by hitting enter, and you can see that's wrong because it moved the code down. Um, you can either delete it or you can just select all and uh, command A, command V to paste it back in there. And then start again, wrist, all right? And uh, if you make mistakes, it's going to tell you there's expression errors. Just up like that one. <laughs> so we'll undo it. Uh, try again. Paste. List. Okay. Okay. So no errors that time. So I undid it. Now, um, what's interesting is now the... The, um, the position and rotation. So when I highlight the wrist, I now, but now we do need to, uh, since, the, since it's no longer assumed that these are going to be um, working from, uh, from the, the normal mesh, now they will, uh, we need to set anchor points to the starting point. So while I'm at zero, I can, I can uh, make the wrist rotation and then I hit the letter P, and it brings up position. I'm going to make, uh, um, and I'm making keyframes for each of these: elbow position with P, elbow R rotation, shoulder position, shoulder rotation. All right. And so now these are going to work together the way that we're used to having things uh, move. So if I rotate the null object, it's actually going to move the arm, all right? And you can see the arm's moving, even though I'm moving the null object, all right? So I can now do the animation based on my, my, my goal, which was I'm going to back this up. Um, and in some ways, it's just easier, because these are tough to twirl unless you move in closely. Whoop, that's too far. There we go. I'm just going to type in a number. I'm going to say minus 20 degrees. And you can see it goes back. Maybe that's too much. Let's say minus, minus 9 degrees. All right. Whoops. 
that's plus, I have to say, minus nine. All right. And now I can use, like I was, the puppet warp, and you'll see as they, they'll move together. So I can actually pull the wrist back, right? And now you can't, you can shrink it in, you wouldn't do that, but you notice that it doesn't, it doesn't mess up the, the elbow position. So I can move this back, all right? And now when I uh, hit play, okay, it's, it's rotating. And so now I can rotate the whole thing forward. And as I move forward, I can say, okay, um, let's, move forward and I'm going to move, rotate the arm forward. So I have to rotate all the way down. So I'll s select the shoulder, select the rotation. All right, we want it to go, that's too far, about there. And then um, when I back up, I can make sure that it's, I want that elbow to bend right, as, as it moves forward. Oops. Or we can use it at the wrist. Oops. There we go. So as it comes forward, we're rotating at the wrist, at the elbow. And now it doesn't look so awkward. And we can add our motion. Back this up a little bit. And then let's see how it looks. Take a moment to render. So now you get to work with a puppet warp in the way that you're used to uh, nesting, all right, uh, shoulder to elbow and have things move with it, which is something that you can't do unless you use these null objects and this expression code. And that's it.